What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Beast for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna go get a new engine for the Lamborghini. And just as I said that, I realized you know, it's not really a new engine. We're gonna get a used engine. And uh, it is for a Lamborghini, but it's definitely made by Chevy. Stay tuned. When we started this build, I said we we're gonna do a lot of new stuff that we'd never done before, and uh, junkyard engine hunting is a new thing for us. We 2JZ swapped the BRZ, but I just ordered that one on eBay. This one, I really wanted to actually hit the junkyard and see what we could find. So that's the plan for today. You guys know it's gonna be an LS engine, but what variation, right? There's a ton of different ones. We're actually gonna do the LQ4. That's the iron block that was built for the trucks uh, variation. Why? Just because it is it is the like junkyard warrior budget LS build engine that you see all over online. There's a million different write-ups on how to build these things to you know every horsepower goal that you want 500 to a thousand horsepower You can find a different write-up about how to build an iron block LS up to that horsepower. They're great engines They're cheap. They came on a ton of different Chevy vehicles And uh, the one downside is that the iron block weighs a little bit more So let's address that the aluminum block weighs about 110 to 120 pounds the iron block weighs about 220 to 240 So we're just cranking it up about hundred extra pounds, which means no passenger or something, who cares? It's just, it's a tiny bit of weight. It's a tiny bit of weight. This engine coming with a four inch bore and a six liter displacement is pretty beastly and the path to upgrades is pretty cheap, I think. I've never done any of this before. Also, the LQ4 comes with pretty low compression, which is great for handling added boost if you're turbocharging or supercharging. We're gonna be turbocharging, so that's an added benefit as well. And being iron, it's a little bit stronger. So, there's a you know, lot of discussion about LS engines and the different ones to pick and stuff like that. But really, at the heart of it, why we're doing it is because I want a junkyard engine and the Lamborghini, and that is the junkyard engine of choice. So that's what we're going for. Now, we gotta find one. We gotta find two. Luckily, Kyle and I both have phones, so rather than hitting every single junkyard in the Portland area, we're gonna start by the pick and pull, all those ones that actually have cars in the yard where you run out there and wrench on them. We're gonna call every single one and see if they have any of the vehicles with the engines in them that run an LQ4. Good point, Chris. Which vehicles do have an LQ4? Well, let me tell you. You can tell a lot of these blocks by the VIN of the vehicle. So these are what they call like a VIN U application, and the, this LQ4 is gonna come in the Chevy Express slash the GMC Savannah, the Chevy Silverado pickup, the 2500, 3500, 25HD, uh, 1500 HD, and then you got the Chevy Suburban, GMC Yukon XL, Denali, the Hummer H2, which we're never gonna find one out of there, and a GMC Yukon Denali. But we're really looking for the right year range, which is 99 to 2007 for these four inch bore blocks. Kyle found a really great thing, I'll put it up on the screen right now so you can kind of see. That's what we're shopping for, so we're gonna start calling. We got some progress. Uh, we called every single kind of u pullet yard in the greater Portland area. That's going about 150 miles south from Portland here and going about 100 miles north. Oh, there's one shop I wanna to call too where I got some FJ parts from. We'll call them real quick. So we've, we've called about 15 different um, shops. One of them has a complete that is uh, being held for potentially somebody else who might not be able to buy it. And then another one has the the block with heads and intake manifold but none of the accessories so the weird thing of what we actually need to do here is we need to buy two ls engines we need to buy one for the mock-up phase so we can continue working and then we need to buy another one so we can have the block and send it off to uh, texas speed so they can start working their magic on that there's a lot of stuff that's going to go into that block so we can make sure that we can like very very comfortably handle a thousand horsepower and push it above later on so that's that's what's going to happen out of texas speed so we have to have two engines so we can work in parallel at the same time youtube sema schedule you guys know all that stuff so one will be used for mocking up everything uh, building our turbo piping our intercooler piping all of that good stuff while the other one is being built so we got to find two engines and we found uh one and a half nope just a half 0.75 all right, I'm excited. We're rushing up to pack. We gotta head off. So I found a core that they say looks like it came out of like a brand, they said brand new. I don't know what brand new means, but it's core that they think is not damaged. So this is gonna be fun. We're gonna be rolling the dice a little bit, like I said earlier, 500 bucks. It's a two hour drive away. So we're gonna head up north and try and do that. Then on the back, if we have enough time on the trip back, um, there's another one that's complete for 1500. So we need a complete for the mock-up phase to figure out spacing and everything like that. And then we'll just use that in another project later on. 
and then the core is what gets sent out to Texas Speed. So we got to hit the road, hit the bank, get some cash. They wanted cash out of, okay, cool. Uh, cash, road, engine. Let's do this. All right, Raptor the rescue, Kyle, you want to get the straps out of there? We're going to have to strap whatever we do down in the back. It's awesome having a truck. Even with a bed this small, we're able to do two engines at the same time, which is great. But if I remember correctly, yeah, there's not enough room. Might have to ditch the spare for this trip. All right, we got some room now. Off to the bank. Damn ATM daily spending limit. We couldn't get enough cash pulled out at once for both the engines today, so we gotta hope that the other guys um, will take a card, check, whatever. I mean, normal American currency. It's kinda weird, because I used to play poker for a living, and uh, I had to get large sums of cash for gambling out at once. So I removed my daily limit, but they put, they put it back. <laughs> All right, to Rainier, Washington, two hour drive. Let's hit it. Hey guys, real quick, before we go get this engine, I wanna take one second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. You guys know about Honey, I love it. It saves me so much money. Honey is the free shopping tool that automatically searches the internet for the best promo codes when you buy something online. Honey works on over 30,000 different sites. I use it on sites like Tire Rack, and Amazon, and Newegg, and eBay, and a lot more. Last week I was buying a part for the Huracan, and it was so expensive that when I bought it, not only did I save hundreds and hundreds of dollars using Honey, but I also got $50 cash back through the Honey Gold program because it costs so much money. <laughs> but it was pretty great to get that free 50 bucks. I would have never had it if I didn't use Honey. If you combine all the savings of all the people that have gotten Honey using our link in the description below, we've all saved over $150,000 collectively, which is pretty awesome. It's super easy and free to install. You just go to joinhoney.com slash build, you click once, click twice, and then boom, you got it installed on your browser and you're ready to start saving money. The average person who installs Honey because of creators like me saves about $30 on average. But Bees for Builders are a little bit special. We, we save almost double that number, which is pretty great. So guys, there's no reason not to install Honey today. It's just two clicks away. Go to joinhoney.com slash build or use the link in my description and grab it today. Now, let's go get an engine. We found something. We are out deep in the yeehaw parts of Washington. Washington. Well, they got cars here. Well, all right, that went pretty easily and very quick. Uh, so we were gonna try and help them out and pull it and do any work we could, but they already got the thing totally out, transmission disconnected and everything. So uh, we paid for it. The backstory on this is, uh, we're not, you know, we're really not sure, but it's, it should be a good solid course. So we'll get to take it back to the shop and break the whole thing down, which will be pretty exciting because I haven't torn down an engine this far ever. So that'll be really fun. Next thing we gotta do is find some uh, points to Oh yeah, we got some good points for the ratchet strap, so we're gonna load it in and strap it down. Carl six liter. That looks just like a Lambo engine to me. Alright, we're loaded up. Now we're gonna do a lot of strapping down. We're gonna try and triangulate this thing in some way or another. We'll hit the road. All right, we're back at the shop. We gotta get this engine out of the truck and unloaded. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our uh, engine hoist. We're gonna kind of set it up in the doorway right there and then uh, try and back the truck up to it and try and hoist it out of here. Exciting stuff! Huracan engine has landed in the Bees for Build shop. So this is the one where the block is going to get sent off to uh, Texas Speed. That's the game plan. So I have to tear this whole thing down and inspect the block and make sure it's good because we don't know why this thing had an engine failure. They were saying it through a rod. Doesn't really make sense why that would have happened. It rolled over, that's for sure. So I'm very curious as to you know what happened with this. And we are rolling the dice a little bit. It could be that the, the block itself is totally screwed up from the thrown rod. So we'll find that out tomorrow. I got myself an engine stand. I'm gonna throw it on the engine stand. We're gonna give it a full breakdown. It'll be really fun. I'm gonna learn a lot about the engine while I take it apart. It'll be even more fun because 
I don't have to worry about anything that I take off. But while I do that, Kyle has to take this here Raptor and head back to Washington to get our other engine. They didn't have it pulled in time, but we do have to remember to buy two of these. So we have one here right now that is toast and then we're buying one more working one for mock-up so we can uh, figure out how to build our engine mounts, figure out our engine and our transmission placement, our drive lines to our uh, rear wheels and all that good stuff. And fingers crossed I don't have to cut an LS shaped hole out of the back of that firewall. But if we need to, it's possible. Good morning guys, it's a new morning. I am so excited to get to tear this whole thing apart. I've never got to do this before. It's gonna be so much fun. So I got the bolts that I need this morning for my engine stand. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the engine stand and we're gonna bolt it to the back of the block back here and then we're gonna slide it over there where we're gonna be working on it. Sweet, we got the engine on the stand and we're ready to start the teardown. So, you know, game plan is I wanna just kinda of start from the top, tear down through the bottom, on my way through there, you know, just kind of constantly learning, removing, and then we're really just checking to make sure that the block is going to be good. So I'm going to start by just pulling off all the covers, miscellaneous stuff, and trying to get all this wiring and wiring harness stuff out of here. That's total garbage to us. We can't use any of it. Okay, the wiring harness is off. It's all just over here. It's kind of my trash pile. But we won't throw anything out, but you know what I mean. It all gets set aside until the builds are completely done in case we need anything. This is just hanging out here. Don't need that. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is work on taking all these front accessories off, take as much of this crap off as I can, and the exhaust manifolds as well. Just pull those off. front accessories came off real easy. The alternator, water pump, power steering pump, the AC condenser bracket, compressor bracket, everything other than that harmonic balancer, the bolt holding that thing in there is a real, real tough one. So uh, that's gonna be a two person job. I'm gonna wait till Kyle gets back. He's, uh, he's on making that run to get the other engine like we talked about. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to the intake manifold. So right here you have your throttle bodies, intake manifold, fuel rails, uh, pushing fuel to the injectors, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all pulled off. That was super simple, it was only 10 bolts. Uh, so like I said, that takes off a lot of things for us. That's your throttle body right here. That's your um, fuel rails right here that push your injectors. So you can see at the bottom, that's the bottom of an injector, if the camera would focus. That's the bottom of the injector right here. And this being one of the six liter iron blocks, it has what's called a cathedral port. It's kind of shaped like a cathedral door, I think that's why they call it that. Um, so yeah, fuel rail. So that's where you have your fuel line running in, runs into here, and then uh, pressurizes the fuel rail. And I'm not positive if this is a return system or not. So we have, see, one line running in. I'm not even gonna guess. I think that this is a return less system. Judging by the looks of it, I don't see anywhere for fuel to come back out of this guy. Um, so yeah, that's injectors all off, fuel rails off, intake manifold off, throttle body off, all comes off together. Uh, I just realized after I did that that I forgot to take the exhaust manifolds off, so I'm gonna pop those off next, and then that'll make us room to uh, pull this guy, which I have no idea what it's called, off, and then we can uh, pull the heads off as well. I 
I pulled the exhaust manifold off and right away some of my fears that, you know, they, so they, when they sold me this engine, it was like, it's a core, but it came out of a basically new car is what they said. It barely ran at all, uh, which, you know, judging by the amount of dirt and stuff on, I was like, eh, that's questionable. You know, basically new could mean like 70,000 miles or less or whatever. I don't know their interpretation of new. Uh, but when I got to the exhaust manifold here, you can see that there is one, two broken off bolts, maybe even missing a third or a blown gasket here because you can see how much like soot and everything is outside of that cylinder. And then one more uh, on the back side over here was broken off as well. So this thing definitely wasn't new in the fact that, you know, it had been uh, used enough that it, somebody needed to work on it in the way of pulling off the exhaust manifolds and then broke all that stuff and never replaced it. So that's all bad signs, but keep in mind that we're just looking for the block condition. So hopefully that those obviously bolts into the heads, not the block. So hopefully we don't have to worry about it. Uh, knock sensors. I had a feeling they were knock sensors. I just didn't want to say the wrong thing. So knock sensors in this case are going to come off next and I'll start looking at how I'm going to remove the heads. All right, I got the knock sensor cover off and the knock sensors out of there. There's so much dirt and everything around though. I decided to just button it back up real quick and we'll go after the heads first. So it looks like there's just this line of bolts here and then down here as well. And then the head should come off. So we'll try and pull this side first. All right, I got the first head off. Uh, like I said, guys, I'm brand new to this, so I actually did not know that you needed to take the valve cover off and, and all the rockers and everything and go through the top. There's, there's uh, well, all of these bolts go through the top. I don't know, I don't know how I didn't think that that was a thing. Anyways, uh, bad sign. We have water mixed with oil uh, sludging up in here. Um, there shouldn't be water in there, but that could be from a bunch of different things. As far as I know as well, they told me the story is that this thing had a rollover. So a lot of different things could be going on. Um, but normally, I mean, that's as far as I know, that's a sign of a bad head gasket. Who knows, who knows, who knows? It's not really worth even worrying about right now because like I said, we're just focused on the condition of this block. So I'm gonna jump over to the other side and uh, do the whole tear down on the other side. In case anyone that's watching is a little bit new to engines and kind of just wants a quick breakdown on what we're doing from a guy that barely knows anything about this stuff, I just wanted to show you kind of, Chevys are a little bit interesting because they have a single cam that's gonna run through here, which I'll show you in a little bit. And the cam rotates as the engine assembly is rotating and it has lobes on it that push these push rods. And those push rods actuate these uh, these valves. So this, this rocker goes down, pushes that spring down and opens up a valve. So you can see how there's two valves right here. That's one, uh, two valves for each cylinder. So one, two, three, four cylinders on this side. So the cam operates what I believe is an intake and an exhaust valve. Uh, some cars have more than one intake or exhaust valve, but anyway, so uh, as the cam rotates. So as you change your cam, which we're gonna do in this engine, we'll have a more aggressive cam, which will change the duration that the intake and the exhaust valves are open and that's how you can get some of those more throaty kind of rub, 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 like v8 engines and stuff like that uh, but that's just a quick quick breakdown from somebody who doesn't know but it's kind of cool you know, these little rods just go up and down a lot hit the rockers and, and push those valves and that's really what your head does is it manages the air coming in and the exhaust coming out and then with this it each head manages four cylinders it's pretty cool, very simple engine. And if you wanna learn more about uh, engines in general, I feel like the old LS V8 is a great place to start. And uh, Jason Fenske Engineering Explained has um, some really, really cool kind of 3D uh, modeled breakdowns of, of how engines work and stuff like that that are very easy to kind of catch on to. So if you're interested, I'll link below um, some of my favorite stuff from him. And that's kind of where I learned the very, very basics of what I know. I don't, I don't know much at all, but that's just kind of where I got a grip on the basics. All right, we got the other head off and uh, the cylinder walls are looking good. Uh, everything so far that I can see looks good. Um, when I was talking about the heads, this is what the bottom of the head looks like. So that seals around the cylinder. And when you talk about blowing a head gasket, that's this baby. 
holds the heads onto the block and uh, there's your valves intake and exhaust i'm guessing just because of the color of that one anywho it is now time to go ahead and drain the oil which is like normally the first thing most people would do but anyways we're going to drain the oil and then we're going to flip this thing over and take off the oil pan and then we can start looking at the rotating assembly underneath here Well, the guys at the yard that I, I got this from seem like real straight shooters. They seem like good guys. They did not seem like they would intentionally do this to me. <laughs> but um, this, this tray in the oil pan normally looks, you know, the same, same direction through here. It's clearly been blasted by a rod. Um, and then you can see a crack in the block right there, right there, leading to a hole on this side of the block as well. So I think this is called a windage tray. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. I'm gonna pull the um, oil pickup tube off and just show you guys the wrath. But um, yeah, this block is no good. It's, uh, it's definitely um, not our candidate. So here's the culprit right here. That's the rod that broke. And then, so that cylinder is no longer active. And uh, it doesn't look like it like scarred the cylinder walls or anything like that, but it clearly broke the block. So uh, this is unfortunately a really uh, heavy paperweight at this point, and uh, we gotta get another block. I'll call the guys from the wrecking yard right now and update you guys and let you know if they decide to do anything. So one interesting thing that we did was we went with a 6.0 on this. We went with a 5.3 for our second one, for our mock-up one, because I figured that the block shape would be so close to similar that we'd be able to do a complete mock-up and they cost, the five threes cost about like half the price, a little bit, one third of the price um, than the, uh, the six O's do at the junkyards around here. So that's why we went with a five three, but that's also a bummer because since this block is broken, we can't just use the block out of the five three, we need a six O block. Uh, the bore is different and so, yeah. Anyways, uh, so I'm gonna make some calls and uh, at least we'll have our engine today. Kyle's on his way back right now. He's picked up our 5.3. At least we'll have our engine for uh, mocking up our engine mounts and our transmission placement, our transmission mounts, all that good stuff. We're still gonna have that. So that doesn't like hold us back at all, but we do need to get our block off to Texas speed as fast as possible. So I need to find us another block. Hey, all right, good news. Okay, so I called the wrecking yard and they were like, we'll, we'll do right by you, we'll get this figured out. And, which is really nice, because I knew I was taking a gamble on a core, but I think a core should mean that the block is like in, well, it is in one piece, just without any holes in it. But anyways, you get the idea. They're like, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call in all our friends in the industry and stuff like that, and see if they can find me a 6.0, and then basically take the money that I put towards this one and, tra and transfer it over as like a credit to, to the next one. So the next one will be $500 less than this one was, which would be really great. So we'll hear back soon, and uh, I'll start moving on that, you know, maybe tomorrow or something, I don't know. But Kyle will be back soon with our other engine, uh, which I'm excited to pull out of the truck. All right, guys, I'm back with good news. So I talked to the junkyard again. They're just gonna hook us back up with our $500 originally that we spent on this motor that had a thrown rod. So that's our 500 bucks back in the bank. Now I found another block that's much more torn down. It's not a complete, kind of like this was. It's just a core. It should be like a block and heads and uh, the heads aren't good. And it's down in Eugene and they only want $300 for it. So that is a, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So um, they're gonna try and ship it up here tonight. So we're either gonna get it in Portland tomorrow or we have to drive down to Eugene tomorrow. But don't worry, because Kyle loves driving. Speaking of Kyle loving driving, he's back with the, uh, with the 5.3 that we're gonna use for mock-up. Now, if we would have had known everything, we could just use this one in a hole, with a hole in it for mock-up, but we didn't know that at the time because he was driving all day long getting the 5.3. So let's get it unloaded out of the truck and bring it into the shop. everybody it's a new day uh, we got lucky the engine got on the truck in Eugene and made it up to their uh, Portland location last night so we're picking it up first thing this morning we're gonna head over there now get it loaded in the truck and head back to the shop so we can start tearing it down oh. 
Pickle Factory. It's Kyle's favorite strip club. <laughs> Actually, that, that whole building's for lease right now. Should we move BS for Build into the Pickle Factory? <laughs> All right, we're back in the shop. So we need to get this old bad block out of here, throwing that into the junk pile, and then we're gonna get the new one onto the stand so I can start tearing it down. Doesn't this look familiar? Here we go guys, cross your fingers. This is round two, we're gonna break the heads down and then we'll flip it over and dive into the rods and pistons. Teardown is complete and everything on this block looks really, really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, we could start over here with the bearings. You can see that the bearings are in really, really good condition still. So either this car was lower miles, well, this came out of a truck. So either the truck was lower miles or the bearings had been changed because you're not seeing any real signs of wear on the bearings at all. The rotating assembly was rotating really, really well, nice and clean. The cylinder walls all look great and clean and everything. So I think this is a great candidate for our block and uh, as you guys can probably assumed or have already assumed by now everything that we've taken out of here and thrown away is getting replaced over at Texas speed so we're talking upgraded pistons and rods upgraded cam uh, crank everything 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 heads um, larger head studs so we can have a better um, way to well you can attach the head with a little bit more pressure so we're gonna have less likelihood of blowing a head gasket under extreme boost all these things are gonna be done to be able to hit our horsepower numbers and that's why we're you know sending this guy off to Texas speed to get the whole thing done originally uh, I talked with Cletus and he said you know the thing you want to do if you get a junkyard motor is you want to you know send out to a machine shop to get it balanced get your rotating assembly balanced and your bearings redone and then you'll be safe to Kind of DIY so then I called Texas Speed and I was like hey I want to do that and then I want to buy these 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 and these and they're like hey why don't you just let us install those for you and I was like you know what we'll do that we'll do that I know I'm normally like the built not bought guy around here and I feel kind of bad just sending this thing out and having all these awesome upgrades done and sending it back. But with what we got on the line and we have the time frame of needing to have it ready for SEMA, I really need this thing to work right the first time. I don't have the time to go through all the iterations of blowing up like three or four motors and learn. But on our next LS, maybe that 5.3 that's right back there, when we put it into a build, we'll go ahead and build that thing ourselves from the ground up, probably using Texas Speed parts. And uh, we'll go through the blowing it up and learning phase on another build, you know. So the last thing that we gotta do before we can package this thing up and get it on a pallet and get it freighted to Texas is we gotta install the bearing caps back in. I'm pretty sure they're gonna need these. So we've laid out all the bolts, just how they were, and they're numbered one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna get those thrown in right now. Got the engine palleted up and tomorrow that is on its way to texas huge shout out obviously to texas speed i want to thank them so much uh, for helping us out with this engine there's going to be a link in the description and guys they uh, are they have really great social media they're great at posting on instagram and they're going to be posting behind the scenes of our actual engine as it's being built so get on there i'll put a link to their instagram as well uh, show them some love throw them a follow say hey from bs for build all that good stuff because uh, they are helping us out in a huge way and uh, you know if we couldn't make this thing a thousand horsepower engine swapping it would be kind of lame right you can't just put in an engine with less horsepower than the one you took out 
And then the next episode, this 5.3 that's behind me is gonna be mated to our transmission, so you'll get to see that for the first time and how all that works, and then we're gonna mount both of those things into the Huracan for the first time. We gotta build custom engine mounts and custom bracketry to land those guys in the right spot so everything lines up and you know we can have things like axles. It's gonna be a really exciting time and a huge milestone, so please join us for that, and hopefully, I'll see you then. Peace!